Welcome to lecture 9. This is a short lecture on satellite multiple access systems. When you have a satellite footprint with multiple users inside it, you want to share the radio spectrum between these users. There are many ways to do that. For example, you can share it by dividing the frequency band that you have. You can share it by providing different time slots to the users, or you can share it by uh, having different codes uh, in the transmission, or for example, by having different uh, subspots within the footprint. We'll see these methods and how they are applied to satellite communications. I hope you'll enjoy this lecture. In a dedicated point-to-point -point link, you have a transmitter at one position and it's transmitting to a receiver at another position and they're using a channel, let's say some frequency F1, let's take an example, 1 gigahertz and of a bandwidth of uh, 10 megahertz. And this channel, I will call it resources, is being dedicated for this point-to-point -point link. An example is an intersatellite link where the two satellites are having a dedicated channel between the two. The, from, on the other hand, multiple access, when a pool of frequency, frequencies or a single uh, frequency is shared among multiple users. Let's take this as an example. For example, let's assume these three users are sharing the same channel, which we saw previously. I mean, it wouldn't be an L-band. Let's say it's something around uh, 14 gigahertz. And let's say it's around 20 megahertz of bandwidth. And you have a lot of users sharing this particular channel. So the question is, how would these users be able to share the same frequency? And this is what we will see in this lecture. Why do we need multiple access? Well, you would like to utilize the satellite as efficiently as possible. Also, you want to use the spectrum as efficiently as possible. And what you can find in individual traffic of a user, that the, the traffic itself is not constantly flowing in the sense that if not everyone is watching, um, let's say, a um, videos at the same time with the same rate, what you'll find some users are browsing internet, some users are using uh, video calls, some users are streaming and so on. Now the traffic profile of users are not constant. So what you'll find the traffic, so I'm just putting here time and the Y axis the traffic is not the same. So the total traffic, what you, you don't want to dedicate a channel for each of the users. What you want, you want to combine all the users on a, the same channel. All of them will be on the same channel. So their traffic will be averaged out and your utilization of the band would be much more efficient. So what we're talking here, we're talking instead of having a dedicated, let's say two megabit per second for each of the users, what, what you can do, you can have a shared six or eight megabits per second for all the users. And then what will happen that the user experience will be better than two megabits per second. And thus you'll have better utilization of the resources. Now this is a very generic um, description, but there are mathematical proof that the, the shared pool of resources are way more efficient than dedicated channels. The first multiple access method is called frequency division multiple access, where the satellite has a bandwidth B and this bandwidth is divided among the users. Now this division does not have to be equal, but if it is equal, obviously each user will get a bandwidth of B divided by N. The second method is called time division multiple access, where the entire bandwidth is given for a single user for a short period of time. So in this scenario, I have N time slots I'm going to give the, um, the bandwidth for the first user, then I'm going to give the bandwidth for the second user, and so on. And this rotation happens very quickly, such that there's no interruptions in the flow of the traffic. There, of course, you have some buffering at the uh, user's location. Now, DDMA is, we will see more details about it, but it's flexible, much more flexible than FDMA, typically much more flexible. The third scenario is called CDMA, or Code Division Multiple Access, where users utilize the entire bandwidth for the whole duration, but they use different codes. These codes are orthogonal and are designed to minimize interference to each other. Now, a fourth method could be also here done. It's called the Space Division Multiple Access, where the server, or the satellite in our case, will have different spots. And the satellite thus can assign the same frequency, for example, frequency F1, to different spots because these spots do not cause inter mutual interference to each other. 
Frequency division multiple axis, the simplest method. What you have here, you have the entire band as you can see in the figure, and you divide this band into a sub band or sub channels, and you assign users. Now you need to keep guard band between the users such that they will not cause interference to each other. The benefit of this method is it's easy to implement and um, can provide an easy method for traditional bent pipe architecture where you have a transponder, let's say this transponder has a 70 megahertz uh, total bandwidth, and then, then you can divide this into multiple uh, smaller channels and assign each channel to different customers. Now, the drawback of the method obviously is that you cannot really divide this too much because um, the guard bands will eat up of your efficiency and the to to total efficiency of your uh, transformer will be reduced. Let's take a typical example of a bent by architecture. There is a satellite in the middle. We have a terminal on the left hand side, let's call it terminal A, and we have a terminal on the right hand side, let's call it terminal B. The, the terminal A is sending a signal to the satellite. This is an uplink signal. And the satellite is thus repeating the signal and send it back to terminal B. Now, in return, terminal B ha having an uplink signal sending to the satellite, the satellite is repeating the signal, and A receiving the signal from B. This is a full duplex um, scenario where you can send and receive from the, from the two both sides. How many frequencies do we need in this scenario? So if you look here, let's say this is this link is operating at frequency f1. The satellite is taking whatever signal being received. It's translating the fre frequency into another frequency. So this would be some f1, uh, let's say, plus some shift. So this is a new frequency. Now, in the uplink direction, we need to use some other frequency, f2. And the satellite will take this frequency and change it with some amount. Now note, somebody would ask why cannot use, um, why cannot reuse the frequency? Well, typically because these are all on in the same spot. So in this case, you have to use four different frequencies. And let's look, let's have a look at here as an example. I have the uplink uh, forward path. So this is the uplink forward path. I'm pointing to it. And um, when you translate that, you will have the downlink forward path. So in this case, this translation happened into the negative direction. So I'll just put here negative, and this would be negative direction. So again, in, from the um, from the other side, you have the uplink from user B is going up, which is this link here, and then being translated by the satellite uh, to this um, frequency. So you see here, in this example, we have a translation of two gigahertz. And for this particular link, we have used four different frequencies. Now, if there are two other users communicating through the satellite, say I have a terminal um, C and terminal D, in this case, the C and D also would require four frequencies. But the idea here is that the entire band of the um, transponder is being divided per frequency or divided uh, is, uh, uh, between these users. Now people knew that FDMA is quite in inflexible and sometimes inefficient. As you saw in the previous slide, if we establish a permanent connection between terminal A and terminal B, it's not necessarily that A and B are actually using this link all the time, um, 24 hours. So what people thought, okay, so I'm going to um, rent uh, a um, particular or lease particular band from the satellite, let's say from the transponder of 70 uh, megahertz, I'm going to lease, for example, a 20 megahertz band. And with this band, I'm going to run a TDMA access method. In TDMA, as we saw before, the entire band, so you usually have a hub that coordinates the access of different terminals. So the hub will assign this 20 megahertz, they assign different time slots for different users. So within this entire megahertz will be used, 20 megahertz. And for example, we'll tell, okay, now user one can use it. 
and then after that user 3, after that user 10, and then maybe it will give to user 1 again uh, two um, time slots because user 1 require, for example, more traffic to be sent. So in this case, what you can see that time division multiple access is way more flexible in assigning resources than the FDMA. Here is an example. We have a three transmitters using TDMA. Each transmitter is sending a frame and these frames are uh, collected in the satellite and being transmitted back to the receivers. Now note the satellite here because they are being received at different times so it's not really doing anything it's just whenever a frame is being received it's transmitted back. Now similar to the FDMA we have to keep a guard but here we have a guard time such that the frames do not overlap and do not cause interference to each other. Note for um, having TDMA to work properly you need a reference signal that synchronizes the transmitters. So the transmitter needs to know when to transmit and for how long to transmit. And that will add an overhead as an overhead control signal to the overall system. Let's try to quantify the required overhead in a TDMA system. What you see here, the x-axis is the time. And I'm, first I'm going to send some reference signals from the um, hub. As you can see here, a reference signal will require a, some guard which is here represented in orange and then I have a reference signal in blue. So the reference burst can send information about the uh, network, can send instructions to the terminals on when to transmit and what time slots to occupy. Now different time slots, let's say this is some user is transmitting a signal. Here are uh, two other users transmitting different signals. Now, when the user transmits, needs to keep some guard band and I'm putting it again into orange. I need to transmit a preamble. A preamble is, um, as you can see in, um, in communication, required for synchronization and for sending management overhead. For example, the requirement of the traffic for the next uh, frame cycle. And then I have in green here, I have the payload itself, which has the data. So this is basically the useful part of your uh, communication. Now, so what is the efficiency of this system? Well, the efficiency of this system can be measured by dividing the uh, green part here. I'm just shading it in uh, with this color in red. So if you, have, if you extract the useful over the entire period, you can calculate the efficiency. So if you, um, we are uh, denoting different um, uh, width here. Uh, and parameters with different uh, symbols. So we have TF is the TDMA time frame, so that means it's the entire time frame. Uh, RB is the bitrate of the data, and everything is happening at the same bitrate here. NR is the number of reference bursts, so you can see here uh, we have multiple references in a time frame. That's to keep the synchronization for to high accuracy. We have uh, NT is the number of traffic bursts. And so here, traffic burst is composed of uh, three things. We'll compose of guard band or guard time, a preamble, and the payload itself. Uh, inside that, we have the number of uh, bits in a reference um, preamble, in the preference burst, and also so that's the number of bits in the reference burst. And in, in the um, traffic burst, we will have the number of bits in the preamble and the number of bits on the representing the guard time. So it is not actual bits, but it's um, it's a time in equivalent bits. Now, the efficiency, as we said, would be the payload bits, which are the green uh, boxes here, divided by the total time. Now, if you um, um, uh, utilize the um, these parameters, you can calculate it as a nice, elegant equation. So RB times TF. So here, what we're doing, we're converting everything into bits. So RB times TF will give you the total numbers of equivalent bits in the um, in the frame, and these are the um, the so these are the overhead. So basically, we converted this equation here to overhead, and all these bits here, what you can see, are the overhead bits that we actually are not utilizing, and this formula will give you then the efficiency. This is a very simple example, a direct application of the formula. I'm not going to go through it in detail, but what you can see here that your efficiency is about 96% in this particular example. Code division multiple access is even more flexible than both the frequency and time. Now it has drawbacks, of course, but I will give you the closest analogy to, to this um, CDMA system. Suppose you are um, listening to another person 
and you know that person you know how they their, their sound you know their voice so even if someone else is making a discussion and trying to interrupt your discussion you can still distinguish that and that's because your ear is tuned to the particular person that you want to listen to and I will, we'll see the mathematical concept in the next slide but this is the closest analogy you can think of of cdma everyone is using the same frequency at the same time but still the receiver can distinguish the particular traffic that is interesting to it so think about this you have some user traffic you multiply this user traffic or you actually spread it using a spreading code one you have another user traffic, you're spreading this with code 2, and then you're transmitting your, your signal. Now at the receiver, you are actually, the, everything is coming at the same time. Now, this is a, an abstract, okay, but, but usually you have the transmitter and channel at this side. Now the receiver side, what will, will it do? It will take what it received, which it contains all the traffic from all the users, then despread the signal by multiplying the, by code 1. So code 1 is known at the users and at the uh, satellite. It will multiply this with the code 1, multiply all the traffic with code 2, multiply all the traffic with code n, and so on. Now, the codes are said to be orthogonal. That is, one code, if you multiply code i with code j, will give you nothing if these two codes are not equal. But if you multiply the code with itself, it will give you one. That means you can extract the code and uh, from the user, so data, so you have sending a payload, what you're receiving is the same payload at this end. Now, this sounds like a magic. However, what is the limitation of CDMA? Well, the limitation is that the bit error rate will increase as these codes are, yes, orthogonal, but what happened with the channel is not ideal. And what, what happens is that uh, you're, you, you start having deterioration in the BER when you increase the number of users. So to understand space diffusion multiple access, let's look at traditional satellite where all the users are sharing the same spot. In this case, if a user A is using frequency F1, no one else inside this spot can use the same frequency. And these spots are really large, can cover an entire continent. However, in high throughput satellite, what you see here, you have small spots, and these spots are reusing the same frequency. For example, you have this spot using frequency F1. Um, this green spot can reuse frequency F1 without causing interference to the initial user. Similarly, I have here a red spot, and let's you call it F2. I can reuse this um, F2 at different position, and thus it will achieve much higher efficiency. Now, with the increase uh, in the, uh, if you increase the frequency itself from, for example, uh, KU band to an KA band, you can even have smaller spots. And remember, when we discussed the antennas, we said if you have an antenna, and the larger the antenna is, the finer the beam, the smaller the beam, uh, beam is. So, however, there's all, there was also another parameter in the equation. If I increase the frequency, let's say this is the spot of a uh, KU band, but if I use the same antenna but increase the frequency and I use, for example, a KA band, what you'll find that this spot itself got smaller. We have a smaller spot and can reuse the spectrum even more efficiently. This is the end of lecture 9. This was a short lecture explaining different multiple access methods and their use in satellite communications. Of course, you can use a combination of different methods. Newer technologies using OFDM or OFDMA, so you can granularly associate frequency and time to different users.